G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot. Here. In the main street of Glen Innes. Haven't lived here all my life. I've noticed a few things. And I've noticed some things come and some things go. Maybe five years ago, when Badger had his antique shop here, next door to him, somebody decided in a fit of wisdom and enthusiasm to open a vinyl record shop selling turntables right here in a main street shop, paying rent. If you back scroll my YouTube videos, you can find at least one video showing the place off, wondering how long it would last. So, a couple of months ago, not long after I came back from my trip to the coast, when I arrived here and I spotted this place, I thought, ah, another strange, misguided enthusiast. Here in Australia, where just about everybody stopped selling tobacco, somebody's opened a tobacconist. Now, many years ago, when I was a kid, we actually had a dedicated tobacconist or two, but both of them were men's barber shops. One of them was in here, and the other tobacconist, men's hairdressers, was here. Alan Hardy had another barber shop down there, but he wasn't much of a tobacconist. I mean, he sold cigarettes, but so did nearly everybody back in the day. These days, it's really only pubs, clubs, and a few large retailers that actually sell tobacco. The cigarettes and tobacco have to be behind closed doors. They put up their prices. And it is bloody expensive. Uh, they don't even show a packet of 20s there. Oh, Chesterfield, $28.95. Here's another place which still sells tobacco and cigarettes. Not the tobacco supply group, but the shop in Glen. TSG, not the tobacco supply group. And I'm told by friends of mine who are still practicing nicotine junkies that a packet of 20 cigarettes in there costs $30. So, when I saw this place, I figured it wouldn't last long. Obviously a misguided enthusiast owing to the cost of licensing and the ambient price of tobacco. You know, like they're not going to be able to sell stuff any cheaper than anybody else. It's going to fix cooler addicts. It's, it's, it's not a viable business. So I sat back and waited to see how long it would be before they went out of business. And bugger me, before that could happen, what do you think turned up? A spelling challenged vaping shop. I don't know whether they're tobacconists as well, but if they're vape suppliers, I'm going to have a bone to pick with them, perhaps. They're apparently the Tamworth vape shop affiliate and the story is the other tobacconist it's an offshoot of an Armadale tobacconist and the Armadale tobacconist set up camp in Tamworth and offended the Tamworth vape shop so now they've come up here to where the Armadale tobacconist had their second shop in it was here something like that's going on but that's not the most interesting bit. The most interesting bit is that, as I said, normal people don't try and make money out of cigarettes because it's a highly regulated market. You go to jail for doing it wrong. 
you've got to pay tax on it, you're not allowed to grow it in Australia. You go to jail if you caught growing it, you go to jail if you caught processing it, you go to jail if you caught smuggling it. It's actually a lot worse being an illegal tobacco supplier than it is being a pot grower or supplier. So I just didn't understand how it got to be there in the first place. Why would it be there? My first thought is that they were probably laundering money. They had some other scam going on and they needed to put the money through a shop front so they'd rented a shop front in Glen Innes and pretended to sell tobacco. And that's where I was thinking as of yesterday. But then I went to talk to some friends and their nicotine junkies and they pointed out to me that if you buy a packet of Bond Street Classic 20s at the tobacco supply group, I mean the shop in Glen, it comes covered with horrible bloody warning photos. It does tell you it's Bond Street Classic, made by Philip Morris, but it's $30. With it, uh, got the backstory of the fellow who's died age 34 from smoking. That's what cigarettes in Australia look like, have done for a few years. Lawful cigarettes anyway. Whereas, I am reliably informed that this was purchased there for $15. 20, double happiness. And in Chinese it says Japanese. What is it? Japanese delicacy. So anyway, that's obviously the secret of the tobacconist gift store. Or maybe that's apparently the secret of the tobacconist gift store. Illegal smuggled cigarettes which have failed to pay customs, sales tax, excise for levies and are very, very highly illegal to be selling. Yes, as I said, very highly illegal. And with all that illegality going on down in the main street, what are the brave boys and girls in blue doing? The gendarmerie behind their riot proof remote controlled armoured gates and expensive fences. Apparently they have yet to detect anything in the main street worthy of their attention. Which is kind of befuddling to me because if I keep the shot running, there's the police station. We come on down here to the corner of Mead Street and Gray Street. I can't fast forward it, so that's a bit tough, but anyway. Now, I know that most cops these days don't smoke, so therefore the cops are probably not familiar with tobacco prices. They're perhaps not familiar with tobacco laws. But being cops, they're usually familiar with every other bloody law, so you'd think they'd know about this one. So anyway, here we go. I don't think you can actually quite sue the police station from the tobacconist. But if you stand here on the corner, you can see the vape shop and you come back to here and you can see the cop shop. And if I get over here, yeah, all right, fair enough. As soon as I get to this point, you can't see the vape shop. So I suppose if they can't see the vape shop from the cop shop, maybe we're supposed to excuse them for not noticing the double happiness Chinese illegal cigarette shop. Slightly further on down here, there it is. So, how does it come to be that in 2022, despite King Charlie having a courthouse to administer the Commonwealth law of Australia in Glen Innes, where we are not undersupplied with legal, eagle, beagle and briefcase.
conveniently located just across the road from the House of Follies, both of which are around the corner from the cop shop. How is it that the police have not enforced the law and shut down the first bloke to open a shop in town selling illegal cigarettes? Is it because we are in New England? Is it because Barnaby Joyce is our Member of Parliament? Is it because Andrew Marshall is our National Party in the State Government, the National Party representative in the State Government? Is it what happens in a National Party inland rural regional town where somebody pays the cops to not do their job? Or is it just the case that the cops can't be bothered? Is it the case that cops don't know what their job is? But somebody has clearly dropped the ball here. If there's an illegal tobacconist in Armadale with a pup in Gleaness competing with a vape shop in Tamworth and now they're carrying on a turf war in Gleaness and Gleaness is unemployed of being treated to half price illegal untaxed Chinese smuggled cigarettes. Yeah, Barnaby Joyce, Adam Marshall, the buck stops with you bastards and the National Party, doesn't it? Hmm? Or are you going to blame Dominic Perrottet? Hmm? The Opus Dei Taliban wing of the Catholic branch of the uh, Chamber of the Horrors of the Commerce. Is this, is this Dominic Perrottet's doing, is it? Calling the cops off so that free market laissez-faire economics can just flog tax-free cigarettes to the underclass in inland New South Wales. Somebody has done some really shittiness in, in leaving that untouched. The three monkeys of corruption, the monkey that sees no evil, walks straight past shit like that. All the people who walk past that buggered up bit of plumbing there, this monkey sees corruption. Monkey that hears no corruption. Oh, I don't know what's going on. No, I don't want to hear any stories about anybody breaking the law or doing the wrong thing because, you know, it's convenient. The monkey that speaks no evil. The monkey that never ever speaks up and tells anybody when some shit's going down that shouldn't be happening. I guess I'm just not any one of them three little monkeys of fucking oriental corruption, am I? Not like whoever it is in the cop shop who got paid to make the gendarmes look the other way when somebody from bloody Armadale come up here and started flogging cheap, untaxed, smuggled Chinese cigarettes in Glens. I'm fucking angry. I notice it's none of the locals. I went and I talked to the locals in the licensed premises that sell tobacco and they said, oh, look, we're not allowed to even go down there and have a look because we work here and it, it would it would be a bad appearance. So the lawful tobacco sellers in Glenness, they're sitting on their hands waiting for the authorities to act and the authorities haven't done a fucking thing. They haven't done a fucking thing. And I find that disgusting. Therefore, thus and because, this little video in front of the House of Follies, which is where those bastards belong for a session in front of the magistrate, And because we live in a land of laws, not a land of bribery and corruption. So we will see what we will see when the consequences unfold downstream of posting the video. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did a pause button zoom malfunction just then at the end. Such as life, never mind. You get that in the best regulated home movies. Warbles on all at the YouTube. Enjoy the substance of the video. Double happiness, hey? Eh? Sure fucking thing, Mr. China Man. Time will tell. Ciao.